In this video, I'm going to go over um, exercise 7.5.1 from the textbook. Um, now, this exercise is actually trying to achieve the exact same result that we got um, from exercise 7.3.7, .7, which is let's come up with the ground state wave function for the um, harmonic oscillator in the momentum basis. But in this exercise, 7.5.1, we're going to do it with the uh, from the energy basis or using raising and lowering operators instead of just trying to solve the Schrodinger equation um, directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the lowering operator acting on the ground state, <coughs> um, which should be zero. You can't lower the ground state energy any lower than its ground state value. Um, it's the it's the bottom. Um, so to turn this into a wave function, we just need to project the momentum basis onto the ground state energy, and we get the wave function for the ground state in terms of the momentum. Okay, which means that we can rewrite this equation here by turning that um, uh, vector state into a wave function. And so we are operating now with the lowering operator on the ground state wave function, which again should be zero. If you're operating on the ground state, no matter if it's a wave function or if it's a vector state, um, it's always going to be zero. So now if we put in the equation for the lowering operator, that's the square root of m omega over 2 h bar, the position operator, plus i 1 over the square root of 2 m omega h bar times the momentum operator. Okay, so we said we want to do this in the momentum basis. So the momentum operator is equal to the momentum. The position operator is equal to i h bar, the derivative with respect to the momentum. And we put that into our equation here, we get this lovely equation. Right here. Okay, so now let's apply that to our wave function. Uh, like so. <clears throat> um, and now we can um, get rid of all this stuff. We can, well, we can divide out all the stuff that's in front of the derivative. So we get the derivative of the ground state wave function plus um, the square root of 2 h bar over m omega 1 over um, i h bar i p divided by the square root of 2 m omega h bar times the ground state wave function is equal to zero. Okay, so let's start canceling stuff left and right. We can cancel a 2 and an h square root of h bar. Um, we can cancel i, so that's good. The equation's not um, complex anymore. And if you group things together, we get... Uh, let's see what's left over. Um, square root of m omega times square root of m omega gives me m omega. There's an h bar right here. All of that um, uh, dividing out the momentum um, times the ground state wave function. And again, if we use the substitution for a dimensionless um, momentum, we get y is the momentum divided by the square root of h bar omega m, um, which means we put this in, we get <coughs> um, okay, uh, the 
derivative with respect to momentum becomes one over the square root of h bar m omega, the derivative with respect to y. And we get one over the square root of h bar m omega, this derivative. And now I'm going to break this up into one over the square root of h bar m omega times p divided by the square root of h bar m omega, which just happens to be y. So I get 1 over the square root of h bar m omega times the derivative plus 1 over the square root of h bar m omega times y times the wave function. So it's pretty clear that we can multiply a square root of h bar m omega and get rid of that. And we get this nice, simple, clean, first order derivative differential equation which we can solve um, in our sleep. <clears throat> okay, so let's solve it. Um, so if we put all the wave functions on one side, minus y dy, we integrate both sides like so. And I get the natural log of, eight of the wave function is equal to some normalization constant um, minus y squared over 2. And now I can get rid of the natural log and say e to the a times e to the minus y squared over 2. <clears throat> um, now this is just the e to some normalization, e to some integration constant is just a constant. So I'm going to call that a0. So our ground state wave function is now some normalization constant e to the minus y squared over 2. Okay. Um, okay, so let's put back in the momentum. So let's um, substitute the y's and we get the wave function in terms of momentum is the normalization constant e to the minus p squared over 2 h bar m omega. So now we've got that um, the uh, exponential part to the um, wave function. So why don't we work out the normalization constant. So we integrate over all momentum space the complex conjugate of the wave function times the wave function is equal to 1. And if we put this into the integral, we get a0. Um, this number is real. I mean, this equation, the wave function is real. It's not complex. So you don't have to worry about any uh, sign changes. Um, so I get a0 squared, the integral, e to the minus p squared over h bar m omega, integrate over the momentum, and set it equal to 1. Okay, so this is a Gaussian integral. And so if you look up at the back of the textbook, it gives you the... Um, answer for if you were to um, integrate over Gaussian integral. And um, what you would get is that um, A would turn out to be 1 over pi h bar m omega to the 1 fourth um, power. <clears throat> Okay, and then um, if we put that back in, my ground state wave function in terms of momentum is 1 over pi h bar m omega to the 1 power times e 
to the minus p squared over 2 h bar m omega, which is the exact same result that we got in the previous exercise when we worked out the ground state wave function um, to get uh, the, um, uh, oh yeah, so if we wanted to uh, get the ground state wave function in terms of momentum. Um, <clears throat> so this is the answer that we were working toward right here. Um, and so now in this um, energy base, and on the energy, using the raising and lowering operators, um, we can do that on our um, ground state wave function. And so um, if you uh, remember, um, what it turned out to be was we would have to basically use the raising operator on our um, ground state wave function <clears throat> in order to get the new wave function, which would be um, uh, the square root of n plus 1 times, I'm sorry, So in this case, um, you would get the square root of 1 um, times the next um, wave function. Um, if I wanted to get the second wave function, I would just operate the raising operator on the first excited state, which would give me the square root of 2 times the second excited state. And so if you were, which we could rewrite as um, the second excited state is a dagger divided by the square root of 2 times the first excited state, which we can write as a dagger, a dagger over the square root of 2 over the square root of 1 times the ground state. So we can build back up now any wave function in momentum space the exact same way we did it in position space where the wave function n is the raising operators n times to the power n divided by the square root of n factorial. <clears throat> okay, and so the last step is to remember that this raising operator was the square root of m omega over 2 h bar times the position operator minus i 1 over the square root of 2 h bar m omega times the momentum operator, and in the momentum space, that becomes i h bar derivative with respect to momentum minus i the momentum over the square root of 2 h bar m omega. <clears throat> so you would apply that n number of times to then go from the ground state wave function up to a wave function of some level n. <clears throat>